Hi, this is King David, and we're back. And this is the how to use channel settings like a pro using FL Studio, formerly known as Fruity Loops. Okay, now what we've been over already is we taught you how to sample and also how to import a sample into the channel settings. Okay, then we taught you how to create loop points using the CRF knob, which stands for crossfade. And then we taught you how to stretch time or time stretching. We taught you the pre computed effects section of the channel settings. And now we want to teach you about instrument properties. Okay, now instrument properties are very important because it's another way to control the quality of the sound that you're working with, right? Which gives you even more of a unique sound. Now, under instrument properties, um, by going to the second tab next to the SMP button, the INS tab will bring you to the instrument properties. The SMP tab will bring you to the sample. So INS, instrument properties, SMP, sample. Okay, now that we are in the INS section, we can begin to manipulate the sound. Okay, let's play our sound. Okay, now under this, we're going to have several different sub-tabs. We'll have the pan, the volume. We'll have the cut, the resolution, and the pitch. Okay, let's deal with our volume. Alright, now under this volume, we can change our pre-delay time and we can slide it to the right or to the all the way to the left now as we go to the right what will happen our sound will begin to come in a little bit later than when we press it also the volume will slowly creep up to its full maximum capacity very good for a more ethereal sound or if you're trying to do something that's very uh, reflective or funeral style music okay or you can change the attack now the attack is how soon the note sounds so what happens is this area between this point and that point comes together so that it's more of an attack on the note and you can hear the attack. Now let's lessen the attack and see what happens. Again, it creeps in slowly over time rather than striking the note right away. Okay, again, here's the delay. Here's the attack. Makes it softer and more smooth as it comes in. Uh, now we also have the hold time and this just determines the duration of the note that's being held. Here's short, here's long. You can hear the difference. It makes a difference uh, if you want your notes to hold longer. Okay, we also now have decay time and decay time says how long does it take for this note to go to zero that's what our decay time will do for us sustain time now this is the slope uh, between the drop off in other words the note at its highest point to where it begins to drop off is your sustain and you can hear how it quickly drops off listen That's a great effect. You can use that in many different styles of music, including dance music. Again. So you can change completely the characteristics of the sound. Again, we'll go down with our sustain level. And up with our sustain level. And it makes a huge difference. And then finally, we have the release time. That's when the note... Uh, will linger on and we're telling it how long we want that note to linger on and you can hear how as we decrease it the lingering decreases 
All right, so this is a very important section here. Uh, the next section we have um, our cut section. Again, we have the same seg segments where we have control over our pre-delay, our attack, but each one will do different things under a different filter. All right, under our vo uh, volume filter, it will have a different characteristic, different effect. Under our cut filter, it will have a different effect. And our resolution, it will have a different effect. Uh, we have also here an amount or modulation amount we can use to change the modulation of the note. And then lastly, we have a pitch section. And again, we have all of those envelopes available to us to control. All right. Now, if we want it to work in time with the tempo that we're working with, such as 140 beats per minute, we would just highlight this TB button, which means that everything we do will now be tempo-based. So it will play in time with the tempo that we have. Okay, the next thing we want to go on to is our LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator. Okay, Low Frequency Oscillator pretty much affects anything that's below audible range, or 20 hertz. Um, you can vary the pitch um, that produces vibrato. Okay, and it makes a difference because you have different shapes um, for your sounds. You can have a smoother shape which is called a sine wave or a more of a triangle which is more of a saw wave and then we have a pulse wave and they all have different characteristics and you should be able to hear them that should be smooth this is jagged and this is pulse now you can change the p the speed to make it more pronounced and you can put distance between each pulse or each wave so if it has a vibrato sound um, this will make it go faster if you change the speed and slower if you stretch it out same effect when you're working with the triangle or the saw pattern All right now you can tell it how much to put on there And now you can actually hear that LFO. And see how it goes up and down? Here's the sine wave. Now we can take some of the amount off. And that's how you can shape your sound. Now that gives you more of a vibrato sound there when we're centered right in the middle. Okay? And you can also ch change the attack, the delay and the speed All right. Uh, lastly what we have is our filter our filter allows us to uh, filter the sound just like almost like an equalizer let's listen to the filter can you hear the difference All right. Now we have a filter resonance. It almost puts air on the note. So if you want something light and airy. Okay, you can do something like that. You also have different filter types. You can use a fast, um, uh, which is called fast LP, which stands for low pass filter. All right, it's a 12 decibel low pass. Or you can just do a regular low pass. Here's the fast. And here's the regular. You can actually hear the difference. Now we have a, a band pass. See? You can start to really see how you can ta tailor your sound and make it original. Okay, let's try the notch filter. Okay, let's try the low pass 24 decibel. Not bad. 
and this is the low pass SVF. And the times two. And that is a 24 decibel low pass. Here it is. All right, let's try and change the sound just a little bit more. See, now we've created our own sound. It's actually our own sound. It didn't come, you know, sounding like it came right out of the box of Fruity Loops or FL Studio. And now we are actually creating our own sound. Now, when we get a sound that we like, we can slide, go to our uh, channel options, left click, okay, and we can save as, sample, save as. Okay, and there's two ways we can save it. We can save the channel state, left click, save channel state, and let's call that. Um, now, th the reason why we save the channel state and not just the sound is because we can apply this channel state on any sound, and it will put that effect on any sound. So let's call this muffled, because it sounds a little muffled, right? But let's save the sound, the sample itself. We can save as. Um, B2, number 2. So we'll, we'll have the original sound as B2, but that's the number 2. So we can do that. Now as we reload, that sound should be right there. Okay? And we are in business. Okay, I'll see you on the next segment. This is King David for BeatClass.com. David and Goliath Music, One Love.